Hey everybody, today I'm going to a memorial service for a professor of mine, David Bevington, who died this summer. David was a Shakespearean. He edited all 38 of Shakespeare's plays, plus the poems and a lot of other Renaissance era playwrights as well. I really admired him. I was a big Shakespeare fan as a teenager, so when I found out that he was in chamber orchestra with me my first year, I was a bit starstruck, but I needn't have been. He was just a real friendly guy who liked talking to people and making friends of all ages. You know, U Chicago and universities in general can be a very hierarchical place, but I think he always fought against that. He made people feel like their ideas were welcome, and he would host parties at his house for all of his students, and he would go to plays produced by undergraduates. And one thing about David is that he would begin all of his classes on the first day of class with this sequence, which is the opening of Henry V. And it's about how it's kind of impossible to portray in vivid, real detail everything that you want to portray if you're, if you're a theater, you know? You just don't have the space and don't have the budget and don't have the, the resources for it. But the imagination is this limitless resource. And I wanted to read this as a tribute to David. This is the beginning of Henry V. Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention, a kingdom for a stage, princes to act, and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. Then should the warlike Harry, like himself, assume the port of Mars, and at his heels, leashed in like hounds, should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. But pardon, gentles all, the flat, unraised spirits that have dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object, can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of France? Or may we cram within this wooden O the very casks that did affright the air at Agincourt? Oh, pardon, since a crooked figure may attest in little place a million, and let us, ciphers to this great accompt, on your imaginary forces work. Suppose within the girdle of these walls are now confined two mighty monarchies, who high up reared and abutting fronts the perilous narrow ocean parts asunder. Piece out our imperfections with your thoughts, into a thousand parts divide one man, and make imaginary puissance. Think, when we talk of horses, that you see them printing their proud hoofs in the receiving earth, for tis your thoughts that now must deck our kings, carry them here and there, jumping o'er times, turning the accomplishment of many years into an hourglass. For the which supply, admit me chorus to this history, who, prologue-like, your humble patience pray, gently to hear, kindly to judge our play. This is for David, and I hope that there are many more plays to come. See you later.